Football League is sponsored by Subaru. Inexpensive and built to stay that way. Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. And by Wendy's Hot Stuff Baked Potatoes. Something new for Wendy's kind of people. Here's the Pasadena crowd on hand here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, awaiting the second half kickoff with the Dolphins leading the Falcons by a score of 17 to 3. McLuckhurst will do the honors. Evening settling in on Miami. You know, we stayed out of Miami Beach. First time I've been down there in a long time, and I am very impressed by that beach area, how neat they keep it, how wide a beach they have. It's very impressive. Nice place to run. Everything was great except the weather. That's it. <laughs> Rained on and off, but uh, you never know. Colton Walker will be deep. I don't know if I'd want to kick off to this guy again. You know, it's amazing. Dan Henning said in his parting words last night, I'm worried about their kickoff return team because it's the best one in football. They are number one. Last time Walker got his hands on the football, he took it back 73 yards. This one from the goal line. 10, 15. Somersaulted at the 19-yard line, and one of the Falcon players was shaken up. Earl Jones, number 20, who made the stop. Big hit. Take a look at the halftime statistics, and uh, doesn't look as wide as a 17 to 3 margin would uh, indicate it would be. Well, that long kickoff return, Frank, plus the great job Miami did on that fourth down attempt and, and stopping Atlanta and then taking the ball here, you know, right before the half and scoring. Earl Jones being 10 to 2 on the field, specialty team standout of the Atlanta Falcons. You know, talking about specialty team standouts, you brought an interesting point out of the game we worked last week. The uh, Dallas Seattle game that some recognition ought to go to these specialty team players uh, a Pro Bowl berth perhaps for someone other than a kick returner or a kicker well they always take the best football players in the football uh, in the National Football League the AFC and the NFC and take them to the Pro Bowl for the best play against the best I just feel it would be great to take the best kickoff coverage guy and punt coverage guys as well and honor them as well be a great incentive for them. timeout According to a highly respected survey of car owners, Subaru was among the top three in customer satisfaction. That's higher than Honda, higher than Mazda, higher than Datsun, higher than Chevrolet and Buick, higher than Lincoln, higher than Volkswagen, higher than Ford, higher than Cadillac and Oldsmobile, higher than BMW, higher than Chrysler. Higher than Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. A Christmas gift from Radio Shack. I was looking for a gift for the whole family, and I found this Radio Shack cordless phone on sale for $99.95. It has auto redial, a privacy button, and you just plug it in. We can make calls from almost anywhere, the kitchen, the bedroom, even out in the back porch. With no monthly telephone rental charges, we save. They'll never guess what I got them. The cordless phone on sale for $99.95, only at Radio Shack. A bull bonanza is ahead on CBS Sports. Number two, Texas meets Georgia in the cotton. SMU and Alabama in the sun. And North Carolina plays Florida State in the peach on CBS Sports. I think we could show you here how Earl Jones probably got a headache. Right, he's coming at the right-hand corner of your screen, up on top. See him coming in there now? You're going to see Fulton Walker's left knee hit him right on the side of the helmet. Now, Earl Jones goes down. He's dinged just slightly. Not dizzy. He had his helmet down. And boy, when you're tackling, you should always try to keep that head up if you can. Earl Jones, real bright young man, a chemistry major, works as a chemist in the offseason. Not smart enough to keep his head up, though, Brent. <laughs> Not today. First and 10, Dolphins at their 19 yard line. Strock 11 out of 11 in the first half in his first action in 11 months and going to David Overstreet. It will be close for the first down at the 29 yard line. Buddy Curry, number 50. Making the stop. Dwight Stevens came around number 57, the offensive center, and really led that point of attack and he did a nice job. Curry's a fourth year man from North Carolina. Played on the same team with Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants. So their linebacking, you'd have to say, was in pretty good shape. It is a first down. They keep comparing Curry with Tommy Nobis. You know, and I've coached against Nobis for a number of years when I was at the Rams, and he was one of the fine all time linebackers, really. And uh, if Curry's that good, then he's in fine company. Don Shula had only one losing season in 20 years as a head coach in the National Football League. That's quite a record. When you start talking about the best, you've got to put his name in that group. 
first and ten at the 29. One back, and that's Andre Franklin behind Strzok. Penalty marker down. Strzok going long for Duriel Harris. And Butler, number 23, there to break it up. But there was a marker thrown at the line of scrimmage. The yeah, real thing I, I've got to believe the Falcons got to do is get a little bit closer to Strzok, give him a little heat. Yeah, they haven't put any pressure on him, and they haven't been real good at rushing the passer. And as Hanning told us last night, Dan said, Coach, we really, really need to improve our defense. Number one, we need a real fine pass rusher. He indicated the problem wasn't all an experience. Either. No, he said, number one, the exp we just need some better football players. And... Uh, I think Dan feels that the defense has remained unchanged personnel-wise for too many years. Now that'll be officially Strzok's first misfire of the day. Give him 11 out of 12 now. I know this. When I was in Philadelphia, I hated to play the Falcons because their defense was so intense, and we always came out of that ball game banged up. Sometimes we won, sometimes we lost. Second and 10 from the 29-yard line. Dolphins leading 17 to 3. Franklin takes the handoff from Strzok. There is a good, solid hit by your old friend, Bolton Kuykendall. You coached him at UCLA. Yeah, I, tell you, I really respect the guy because of everything he does so well. And I don't think he's ever received the recognition like a Pro Bowl uh, no trip or anything like that. Now, sit right in the middle of your screen, number 54 coming up in. Look and fill. Boom. Look at that tackle. Right like it ought to be done. Right down the middle of the guy, helmet up, arms wrapped around, puts him down. Bolton Kuykendall. Third down, nine. Dolphins, nose of the ball, just inside their 30-yard line, early in the third period. Strzok from the shotgun. Gets it away, intended for Matt Moore at the 45-yard line. And Miami will have to punt it away and call on Reggie Roby. Well, they got him to throw an incomplete pass, Frank. Now that's two in a row. <laughs> So Roby comes in to do the punting. He kicked just one time in the first half. This guy is really fun to watch punt. Let's time him and see what kind of hang time he gets. He sticks those hands out. Very unusual. And then notice he doesn't have hardly any follow through. His foot doesn't get high like so many punters. He had a one year college record averaging 49.8 yards a punt. That's like the old timers used to average. Billy White Shoes Johnson is deep and he can perform some magic. Not a great punt. Good return punt. Johnson at the 30, 35, 40. Still on his feet. Squirming to the 43 to the 44-yard line. Goes White Shoes. So Roby not happy with that one, at least by his standards. A 40-yard punt, a 15-yard return by Johnson. The tackle made by Bruce Hardy. We've got a timeout here at the Orange Bowl. Oh, no, wonderful day like today. I defy any cloud to appear in the sky. Dare any raindrop to plop in my eye on a wonderful day like today. Subaru presents the only full line of on-demand four-wheel drive vehicles in America. So now, every day can be... A wonderful day like today. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. Grand Coulee Dam, built to harness the power of the Columbia River and provide electricity for millions. That took bold imagination, and it made this country grow. Today, I see that same kind of imagination in hundreds of small to mid-sized companies whose new ideas, new jobs, and new technologies will continue to build America. At First Jersey Securities, we specialize in discovering such emerging growth companies for today's investors with vision. First Jersey Securities, come grow with us. Falcons with excellent field position have a first down at their 45-yard line. Stacy Bailey split wide to the left side. Floyd Hodge is flanked to the right. Arthur Cox, the tight end in motion, as Barkowski comes out through it here in the second half, going to Bo Robinson, and Robinson gets all the way down to the 41-yard line. You remember, Bo Robinson was a running back. Now he's what they call the H-back, that one back moving and, and doing mostly blocking chores and there he finally got to be the receiver he's only caught nine balls this year that's his 10th no you're right redskins call him the move tight end the cowboys call him the rover back uh, who is it calls him the u back yeah that was the rams i think yeah <laughs> the u back the rams how oh, you like that one frank not bad <laughs> 
That's capital U, not <laughs> EWE. First and ten from the 40. It takes a whole lot of people to stop William Andrews once he gets rolling. And he's got enough for another first down for the Falcons at the 27-yard line. Glenn Blackwood coming up from the secondary. Number 47 to make the stop. The motion man moving from the left of the screen going to the right. Now follow him. He's the point of attack blockwise. He gets a real nice block. Charles 71 working out. But look at that block on the Bowser. Kicks him out. There he goes. He's pounding his way up inside. Look at that power. 13-yard pickup on the play. And the Falcons moving on their first offensive possession as Andrews gets a breather as he nears the 100-yard rushing mark. They're showing that they didn't let that touchdown right before the half bother. They're coming out here psychologically strong. Bartkowski over the middle. Riggs is inside the 15 and out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Gerald Riggs hit by Gerald Small. Number 48. And here come the Falcons. They're not quitting. No, they're not. They're coming back strong. And that's a credit to this football team and their coaching staff. Now, it's a little check down. The back stays in the backfield. Now, watch him move off. See him now. He's going to sit in there and hold, hold, hold. When the defender's getting as deep as he is, he releases out of the backfield. Now, Dewey, number 77, comes over. He doesn't get into him real good. Bang, he pops him. And that's the fastest back on the team at 230 pounds, Frank. Markowski brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Riggs is the sole setback. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. On the delay, the handoff to Riggs. He's at the 10-5. Riggs is down to the 2. Gerald Riggs, the second-year man from Arizona State, who went 40 yards earlier this year against San Francisco, the longest run from scrimmage for the Falcons in 1983. Stopped short of the touchdown by Gerald Small, but uh, they could get a first down by getting inside the one. So they're looking at second down, one for the touchdown, one for the first down, and two for the touchdown. I had the opportunity to coach Riggs in an all-star game, and we as a coaching staff selected him as the guy to most likely succeed in the National Football League, and he won a free trip over to the Bahamas. He hasn't done badly. They've got Riggs and Andrews both in there now on second and one from the two. Riggs Touchdown. drives into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. A pretty impressive drive. It was a well-executed drive, and we said all along, this is a good offensive team. See the guard step around there, did a nice job. R.C. Thielman stepped around. Jeff Van Oat blocked back to his left and opened a nice hole right up inside that even defense at that time. 17-9, Miami with the extra point try to come from Luckhurst. Don Shula has been in this situation many times, having coached nine playoff teams, and his record over the last two games of the season for those 18 games is 15-3, and three, so he can't say he's going to lose this one. There's Coach Shula. Shula has uh, one game left next Friday against the Jets. Atlanta's last game will be against Buffalo. They haven't had the easiest of it, the Falcons, to schedule the closing weeks of the season. Washington, Miami, and then Buffalo to close it out. But we've got a ball game here at Miami. Ooh, hot. Hot, so hot. Wendy's baked potatoes are... Hot stuff. Wendy's stuffs them all kinds of ways. Hot. Like with cheese. Ooh, what a tease. Chili and cheese. Bacon and cheese. Broccoli and cheese. Wendy's. Sour cream and chives. That makes pie. Wendy's stuff. Baked potatoes. They're hot. <coughs> the Wendy's kind of people. Ooh. styling and perhaps the greatest luxury of all a sensible price the beautifully affordable gl 10s from subaru inexpensive and built to stay that way next sunday regional action featuring an important western division showdown between the los angeles rams and the new orleans saints plus other games all starting with the nfl today on cbs sports One of the key matchups in that Dallas-Washington game will certainly involve a Dexter Manley, the defensive lineman for the Redskins. 
against Pat Donovan. Dexter says you want some of Danny White. Oh, yeah, we heard that. But I'll tell you, <laughs> Donovan is capable of blocking Dexter. But, you know, you're going to win some and lose some. And Dexter's had a great year, but he cut his hair. He was going to change his look. That may be a point. Yeah. He's kind of got a reverse Samson situation. Yeah, here they are. Right. Look at that haircut's changed. Dexter's changed his hairstyle. Pat Donovan, you know, he's a mechanical engineer. He's going to have to be mechanical tomorrow. Luckers is ready to kick off. 17 to 10 now. Dolphins lead is cut to seven. Fulton Walker waiting at the goal line. 15. Across the 20. Ball comes loose. We got a penalty marker down on the flag. The Falcons have recovered, but let's see what the marker is. If it's against uh, Miami, obviously, Atlanta will decline. What a hit that time. Maybe Atlanta was offside. Here it is. Fulton's taking it. He's got it tucked away nicely right there. He's running really good. He's coming up inside. Get out of his way. That's it. He peeled off. Now he broke it up inside. And Dixon, number 51, comes over and really nails him. And the ball drops out. There they're fighting for it. It'll be a re-kick. Looks like Walker may have been shaken up. Offside, the indication against the Atlanta Falcons. It may be a case of offsetting penalties, but in either case, they will re-kick. So the timeout, obviously, for the injured player who was Fulton Walker, and he got crunched about as good as anybody's been crunched all year right. on a return. Yeah, he really got a hit. You know, he was a running back his first couple of years in college, and that's why he has such fine running skills as a kickoff returner. They really think he's going to be fine defensive back as well. 10 minutes, 21 seconds left in the third period here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Come on, I'll race you back. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. For Michelob Light? Catch you later! Michelob Light for the win. Would a couple of guys really go at it like this for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, the rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Too bad you missed that light back then. Yeah. But I made this one. Make a light! According to a highly respected survey of car owners, Subaru was among the top three in customer satisfaction. That's higher than Honda, higher than Mazda, higher than Datsun, higher than Chevrolet and Buick, higher than Lincoln, higher than Volkswagen, higher than Ford, higher than Cadillac and Oldsmobile, Higher than BMW, higher than Chrysler. Higher. Subaru, inexpensive and built to stay that way. Coaching may be the difference when Denny Crum's Louisville Cardinals take on Jim Valvano's defending champion North Carolina State Wolfpack. NCAA basketball next Saturday on CBS Sports. Offsetting penalties, a clip on Miami, offsides on Atlanta, so they'll re-kick it. And that's a costly one for the Falcons. Who would have had the ball at the 25-yard line on the fumble recovery. Vince Heflin is now deep. Replacing Walker. Back to the 20, 25. Across the 30 to the 32-yard line. And Miami will put it in play from there. Once again, the big doubleheader on CBS tomorrow. The early game, depending on what part of the country you happen to be. These will be the featured early games. And, of course, we're all waiting for the big matchup between the Redskins and the Cowboys. Redskins have won 27 of their last 30 games. Two of those losses have been to Dallas. And talk about key matchups in that contest. How about this one? Joe Jacoby, you know, he's the big son of a gun, almost 300 pounds blocking on a Harvey. Harvey's going to have to have a great day to, to keep them in that ballgame. 17 to 10, Miami. Over Atlanta, first and 10 from the 32-yard line. Strzok. David Overstreet was the intended receiver, number 20. May have heard a footstep or two. Might have tried to start running with the ball before he caught it, too. You know, and the other thing is now the lights are on and the, you know, just how you look at the ball might be a little bit different. How you see it coming at you. Now, Strzok, after hitting 11 in a row, has now missed on his last three pass attempts. Well, you can't really call that a miss, Frank. That was a drop. 
Duriel Harris wide to the right side. Mark Duper, who has been held in check. He's their home run threat, split to the left. Second and ten. Again, over straight. This time he hangs on, but doesn't get much after the 33, 34 yard line. So the Dolphins looking at a third and eight. So I know this has been a a long week for you, jetting back and forth from the East Coast to the West Coast with your mom a little under the weather, but I understand she's doing well out in California. Yeah, yeah, she is a, she's a little bit more than under the weather. She had a five-way bypass, but she's a strong lady and a super person, and she did real well. I know we uh, we all wish her well. You bet. I wish her well, and I know everyone sends their love. Third and eight. The Dolphins at their 34-yard line. has a shot at being a thousand yard pass receiver this year. That's something that Miami has never had, even Paul Warfield. Strzok going to Duriel Harris at the 50. First down at the Atlanta 43. As we said, working his way out of Don Shula's doghouse. All right, and when you get in Don Shula's doghouse, you're liable to be building yourself a pen you can't get out of. One-on-one, -on -one, he's going to come in. Now, watch him sticking right there. Now, move back to the inside on Butler, number 23. Got it. He should have had some help on that defense, right? That's tough in that third-down situation. Take him one-on-one. 24-yard pickup on the play. His dad is an assistant coach at Tulane. Right, and he played with Joe Washington. He was a real good friend as they grew up in Texas. First and ten, Miami at the Atlanta, 44. Make to Overstreet, Strzok will go long. Johnson back there defending. And Mark Duper is claiming that he was interfered with, but no call. Duper has been a, a real surprise for this team this year. Number two draft choice a year ago, great track star from Northwest State, Louisiana. Joe Delaney's old school. Great position by Kenny Johnson, number 37. The defender playing him inside out right there. Now he's moving right. It looks like he just sort of shut him right off right there and maybe gave him a little contact shove right there. <laughs> I can see why uh, old Dupe is a little upset. Well, Dupe has caught passes worth 836 yards this year. The Dolphin record is 996. Held, of course, by Paul Warfield. One of the best wide receivers I've ever seen. If not the best. Second and ten. The Atlanta 44, it's Overstreet. Find some running room. Great cutback. Overstreet down to the 22-yard line. First down, Bridemore. Save the touchdown, number 27. Frank, that was the same play he broke to the outside earlier in the, in the first quarter. Actually, now watch the left of your screen. The left tackle's going to pull. See Geisler coming around there. Geisler up in the hole. He was supposed to go up in there, and he saw the outside. Has the speed. He jukes him. He's up inside. Now he's running like a son of a gun. Look at him. Pridemore, number 27, comes over and makes the play. Boy, what speed and acceleration he has. He left Glazebrook grabbing air, that's yeah. for sure. First down at the 21-yard line. Overstreet has now carried eight times for 38 yards. Dolphins leading 17 to 10, going for more. Strzok over the middle. Hardy. Bruce Hardy, the tight end, down to the 11-yard line. That will be close to another. Miami first down. That was a real interesting pattern. He ran a straight, straight angle to the sideline, got the running backer, line, excuse me, the running back running with him, or linebacker running with him, and then reverse pivoted and came back underneath him. Sort of a little fancy delay. By the way, the word on the bench on Fulton Walker, who left the field under his own power, obviously he took a shot to the head, and he will not play the remainder of the game. Second down, one from the 12. Overstreet, Franklin, the setbacks. Franklin, big hole, inside the 10 to the 5 to the 3. Franklin picks up the first down, and they open it up that time. For yeah, they re when you're running behind Newman and Stevenson and Kuchenberg up inside, see the center block off Stevenson, and Kuchenberg trapped him. Now he's up inside that hole, and the defensive back has to make the play. Real fine offensive line execution there. Coached by John Sandusky, and a real fine offensive line coach. Shula's going to be losing one of his uh, top assistants in Bill Arnsparger. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But right now, the Dolphins have a first and goal upcoming from the three-yard line. Bennett has come into the backfield to join Franklin. It is Franklin driving for the goal line and stopped short at about the one. Four, 
They're running over there behind big Roy Foster. In it. It's a tight end. Woody Bennett kicked out number 34, and they just ran in with rear power. Andre Franklin. You say big. Uh, you know, Foster is up there in that 280 area. He is the first USC player ever to play for the Miami Dolphins. I can understand that, having coached at UCLA a little. <laughs> Second and goal from the one. Woody Bennett coupled with Andre Franklin in the backfield. Franklin, did he get in? No indication yet. Touchdown, there it is. see if he really did score it didn't look like it from up here but I'm sure the officials have a better angle than we do now they're gonna just power it straight ahead man blocking let him power his way in there he's underneath it it doesn't look like there's the ball to the right corner of the screen he did get in on Shaman on to try the extra point Andre Franklin getting congratulations still hasn't caught a pass this year Franklin but he has scored eight touchdowns all on the ground what he's paid to do. On foot. Max on the extra point with five minutes and 22 seconds left to play in the third period. And once again, the Dolphins have assumed a 14 point lead. One computer company has been shaping the way business does business for 99 years NCR. Today, NCR High Technology puts computer power where business needs it most. From the powerful NCR personal computer, Decision Mate 5, to the awesome power of the 9300, the world's first full 32-bit VLSI mainframe for business. NCR, shaping the way business does business. More than 2,000 years ago, before the age of the Caesars, Vinifera grapes were first cultivated in Italy, and through the centuries, they have become the grapes that produce the very finest wines in the world. Today, these classic Vinifera grapes give Riuniti a unique soft and light taste. Pure and natural Riuniti is the world's best-loved imported wine. After all, our roots go back 2,000 years. Dolphins 24 and the Falcons 10 midway. In the third period of play, Von Schaumann getting ready to kick it off. There's Andre Franklin, who just went over for the touchdown. His Nebraska team, of course, will uh, be appearing here on January 2nd against Miami. Richard Williams will be deep. who is a second-round draft choice of the Redskins and then cut at the 20, up to the 25. Still on his feet and finally run down to the 29-yard line. Williams played his college football at Memphis State. NCAA basketball coming up next weekend, immediately following the Giants-Redskins game on CBS Sports. The defending national champion, North Carolina State Wolfpack, and that means uh, Jim Belvano, who is a fun guy to be around against Louisville. Oh, yeah. Danny Crum didn't do bad himself. Not bad. Gary Bender, Billy Packer will be on hand for all the action. Be watching next Saturday, 345 Eastern Time. Atlanta first and 10. The officials have it marked at the 28-yard line. Barkowski on the roll. Pumps it once. Look at that arm. Airing it out for Bailey, and Bailey had his hands in the football. Should have caught it. Glenn Blackwood was there. The pass slightly underthrown. And he had a direct line on it. It looked like he was up there in position to make the catch. It just didn't make it. That's the first one I've seen him drop in two games. Here he is isolated. He has great speed. Sprinter speed. He's coming off inside now. They're playing him outside and inside. Now he pushes in. Look at him going right down the seam. You're going to see another defender appear to the right side. Here he comes. See, he had that ball. He should have made that catch. The safety came over. Blackwood came over inside down it just like he's supposed to. But he's actually supposed to knock that down or intercept it. The numbers on Steve Barkowski, not bad. He's had several drops. Hodge in motion. A 
on second and ten. Sideline throw intended for Hodge. He was well covered by Kozlowski. Number 40 on the far sideline in front of the Falcon bench. Now, I know you were down talking to Bill Arnsparger before the game. He, of course, is going to take that head coaching job at LSU. That surprised a few people. At his, his age, 57, the security he's got here to get into that, uh, you know, red-hot number one college coaching situation. Well, he said, you know, he's just excited about it because it's an exciting place to coach. He says, if you've ever been on the sideline down there in LSU during a ball game, you'll know what I'm talking about. And he's doing two jobs right now. Tonight after the ball game, he'll fly to LSU and work for a couple days and then be back and be the Miami coach. But he is really fired up about this opportunity. He is the mastermind of this Dolphins defense, has uh, run the defense for 10 out of the last 13 years. And uh, Shula, maybe have a tough time filling his shoes. Hey, it's tough to replace good people. But uh, the one thing about Don Shula, there's only one guy that runs that football team. In fact, when you're around the whole organization, out where we were yesterday and the day before, <laughs> you know who's the boss. And of course, as we related earlier, Dan Henning had some awful nice things to say about Shula and his experience. Uh, he was here two years. He was here when uh, when Strzok was a rookie. Yeah, plus he coached him all the way back at Virginia Tech when he was a junior year in college. So he's been around him, and it, this guy's a fine football coach, and it's just, you know, he has to rebuild that defense, and, and Atlanta's been a good offensive team in the past under Lehman Bennett. They've done a good job, and they've, the defense has just maybe gotten a little bit old. They have lost some close games this year early they had five losses by a total of, uh, of 19 points and uh, five games in which uh, uh, they were in the ball game with two minutes or less and the game went the other way yeah well see so you just have somebody has to make the difference for you third down falcons need 10 for the first down at their 28 yard line they trail 24 to 10 with 455 now this, uh, keep in mind, is the best third down conversion team in football. 53% efficient on third down. But thus far today, only two out of seven. Barkowski's got White Shoe Johnson in the lineup. Barkowski trying to get out of trouble. But one thing that Bart is not is mobile. A.J. Dewey picks up the sack. The first sack of the day for the Dolphin defensive line. A.J. Dewey plays linebacker until a third down nickel, and see, he beat Bryant inside. I don't know what Bryant was looking at. You know that Bryant, sometimes you, you just, you watch him as a coach, and you get so upset with the guy because he's so big, but he's, a, he's an underachiever, right? He just, he doesn't give a line on what he's uh, getting paid. Jack Amaro, great punt. Heflin at the 20, up across the 30. Caught from behind at the 40 when it looked like he was just about to break one. Ben Zeppelin, who was a backup wide receiver and filling in for Fulton Walker, who was shaken up earlier. Thought that he had one, and Stave Hayworth, number 30, made the stop. And this is against the number one punt coverage team in football, and of all of football, not just the NFC. Look at him attacking it. Did a good job. He just powering his way up in there. Now he breaks it off to his right, gets tackled from behind. Just good, intense running. And another thing is he went straight up field with it. He wasn't running to the sideline. Miami leading Atlanta 24 to 10. And just over four minutes left to play in the third period. Four minutes and 17 seconds to be precise. 54 on the punt and 19 on the counter punch. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Strzok to his ground game and jammed up very effectively at the line of scrimmage is David Overstreet. Overstreet uh, indicated to us he's going to have a little talk with uh, Don Shula at the end of the season and uh, see what his status is. Right. We're getting a replay right now, though, of a, of a sucker play that didn't work. When I watch the right guard pull, and they're going to run right back in that position. The right guard, right to the right of the quarterback, number 10. Now watch your right guard, Ed Newman. See him pull there? Now they're going to try to come in and lead block him there with the back, but somebody else ran a stunt and got into Overstreet right there. Miami likes to run those sucker plays against a four-down lineman defense, France. Is that a Shula trademark? Well, yeah, it is. Second Other people do it, too. Strzok going long, intended for Cooper. And Cooper doing just a great job out fighting the defender for the ball. First down at the 12. It has been a long afternoon for Duper, who hasn't been able to get loose, but he did a job that time. Here it is. 
is isolated. It was a good job by Butler. Played. He's got a nice position. Now he's going to turn and run with him. He's got his eye back to the ball. Now he lost Duper altogether. See, he lost him altogether. Now he goes up for the football. Does a super job of fighting for it and coming down with it. They both might have had the ball there for a second. Duper catches a touchdown pass every 4.8 receptions this year. That's amazing. And percentage of... Percent TDs per pass is one of the high stats in terms of success this year. First down after the 47-yard gain at the 13, Overstreet. Trying to get outside, he's at the 10, 5. And he is over, touchdown. Great block along the way by Ed Newman, number 64. Overstreet goes 13 for the score. Ed Newman, number 64, the right guard is going to be pulling to his left. See him pull right there. Did a nice job. The running back got a nice block. Now watch Ed Newman get a cut down on the Fulton Kuykendall right there. Now he's out there one-on-one -on -one with a defensive back. Come on, Pride Moore. I've seen you tackle better than that. See, he tried to reach with his hands. He's got to get those shoulder pads on him. Just did get to the flag. 13-yard touchdown for David Overstreet. Is he happy? Oh, yeah. He knows he hasn't been playing very much, and he's trying to fight his way into that starting lineup. He has rushed for 75 yards and 10 carries, averaging 7.5 per carry. You can see Fulton Walker's all right, but right now the guy is hurting a little bit is Duriel Harris, number 82. He got a nice block downfield and evidently dinged himself a little bit at the same time. But I was saying there earlier, Frank, percentage touchdowns per pass this year is really a strong stat in terms of the winner of a football game this year. And a, Miami, I think, was number one or number two in the NFL in terms of throwing a pass and scoring with it. Dolphins 30 and the Falcons 10 with the extra point try to come from Von Schaumann. Strock has been the holder all year. That's the only action he's seen prior to last week. Thirty-one to ten. Fine. Thirteen-yard run by David Overstreet makes it a twenty-one-point advantage. One of the other keys of that was the block by the halfback up there. Now you can see him coming around to the outside. Pursuit coming inside out. There was a knockdown block right there. A good block by the receiver. Now just good strong running. You see where Duriel Harris right there got hurt. Of course, not seriously, but he was out there blocking like a lot of receivers won't do. Overstreet congratulating Ed Newman, number 64, who threw the big block for him. Yeah, he's fired up. There's Sandusky, isn't it? Yeah, that's John. He's a native Pennsylvanian. Many Sanduskies around that Pennsylvania area. So the Dolphins appear to have things pretty much in command. However, they really can't clinch anything today in terms of the home field advantage. They're going to have to wait a, another week. Right. Plus some other things that, you know, can go right or wrong for them with the other teams that are in contention and they're competing with. I think it's so complicated as you read it. You darn near need a law degree, I think, to figure it all out. Well, all we can tell you that going into this next to last weekend, four of the six divisions were still up for grabs and 19 of the 28 teams were still mathematically alive with a shot at the playoffs. I was in Northern California, as you said earlier, Frank, and I read what the 49ers had to do and what all the variables on the, in the paper. By the time I finished reading it, I was confused. Von Schaumann is ready to kick off. Richard Williams is deep. High kick and rather short. Coming down to the near side to Willie Curran. Number 89, he fumbles the ball. And the Dolphins may have it at the 28. I think Miami got it, Frank. It looked like it from here. Matt Haggerty, the referee, trying to unpeel everybody before we get the official notification. No signal yet. There it is. They're going to give it to Atlanta. There was some dog fight going on in that pile, I'll tell you that. Here he goes, Billy Curran. The only rookie to make the team a free agent rookie a year ago from UCLA. He's taking it up inside. Now you'll see the ball come out of the ground right there. Let's see who gets it. There's three Miami guys on it. You wonder how they could have missed it, but you know as well as I do that a lot of funny things happen out of oh, those piles. Yeah. I've had him go uh, in favor of 
my organization, and I've had him go against it. There's Robert Sowell, number 45, one of the key specialty team players. He's the guy I'd send to the Pro Bowl out of this AFC division. He's representing a special team Look player. at that Look dive. At what he effort. Self-sacrificer he is. Young man played one year of college football at Howard University, then had to drop out of school to help his parents out. And pleaded with every team in the league to give him a shot. And he's going to be a flying defensive back. First and ten, Falcons at the 29-yard line. Barkowski handing off to Andrews. Should point out that Andrews uh, this afternoon has set a new Atlanta club rushing record. He needed only 61 yards coming into this game to set the new club record, which was 1,308 yards, and he's got 86 at this point. So another milestone for Andrews. Mike Ken, number 78, the left tackle, really did a nice job of blocking Mike Charles that time. Really hooked him nicely. You know, Mike Ken is a real quality offensive lineman in this league. Second and seven from the 31. Billy Johnson in motion. Arkowski under pressure away from Charles and now they're ruling that he was in the grass they are ruling that Barkowski was in the grass but Mike Charles and Charles saw that sack slipping away from him so he got it back yeah you can see that he is a little bit of a enthusiastic type guy here he's going to be coming in from your right side of your screen see Charles number 71 working on RC Thielman. and he beat him to the outside on a stunt there he's got him wrapped up right there. I can see why they called it. I'm not sure I like that call, but I can see why it was called. Mike Charles from Syracuse. Loss of the play back to the 22-yard line. Third down, 17. Andrews on the draw. Out across the 30, fights his way to the 35. And the Falcons will be punting with a minute left in the third quarter. Barkowski, despite that uh, knee problem, moving pretty well. He and uh, Marino are both wearing those Lennox braces, which have, uh, well, were popularized originally by Joe Namath. Well, I, I saw Dan on the field with it and talked to him about it. And the knee brace was a little bit restrictive, and he, he had a, a mechanism on there that was also treating the knee at the same time as he walked around, a little pulsating type uh, piece of equipment. Heflin is deep. They're throwing. Giacomaro. On the fake, and the Atlanta Falcons have picked up the first down. And certainly, what did they have to lose in a situation like that as the pass was completed to Alamo Matthews, number 49. Ralph Giacomaro, the punter, engineering major from Penn State. He engineered a nice completion right there. Look at that pass. That looks like something I'd throw, Frank. Now, there's old Alma Matthews out there. He's only had two catches this year. That makes number three. Alma Matthews. He was their 12th round draft pick this year. Last man pick. And is he happy? And for Giacomaro, first time he's thrown a pass this year. Atlanta's had a lot of luck with that 12th round pick. Four of their last picks over the history of their football team have made their roster. 31 seconds left in the quarter. First down from the Miami 43. Markowski pumps it once. It's Andrews. Well, he lifts those knees up and pulls those legs forward, doesn't he? Indeed he does, and that's another first down at the 26-yard line, and Andrew says, I think I need a breather. I got a he knows only one way, and that is full speed ahead. And he runs upfield all the time. He spends very little time going to the right or the left. It's straight ahead, Frank. There's the gun. the end of the third period of play with the score. The Miami Dolphins 31, the Atlanta Falcons 10. We now pause for a word from your local station. Sunday, it's an extraordinary evening of laughter, entertainment, and surprises. Join Jimmy Stewart, Richard Burton, Bob Newhart, and more. An all-star party for Frank Sinatra. This is CBS. Introducing the amazing Renault Encore. Look how it feels to flow through hairpin curves. Feel the amazing response of electronic fuel injection. Look how the new Encore feels as it almost ignores gas pumps and loads to the road with all wheels suspended independently. For an amazing 5755, the new Renault Encore. Amazing. The one to watch, the one to watch. 
See your local New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, AMC, Jeep, Renault dealers, the ones to watch. Coupons, coupons, coupons. Here's a challenge for a Connecticut business. Can you tell which responses to your advertising are hot prospects and which aren't? Sending a salesperson to find out could cost as much as $178, but there is a fast, less expensive way to tell which responses are just paper and which are potential customers. Well, yes, we do plan to buy. It's called telemarketing, and it's a better way to do business from Southern New England Telephone. Call us about telemarketing for your company. Suave Bola is more than wine. Who should know better than Franco Bola? There's more, more. From Sierra There's Franco. more, so much more. There's more than wine in a bottle of Bola. Love makes people happy. Suave Bola, crisp, dry, and something more. There's more than wine in a bottle of Bola. No wine. Coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Chevrolet. America is on the move, and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge. And by Pabst Brewing Company, brewers of Pabst Blue Ribbon Beer for the real taste of beer. Pabst is the place. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl. Balmy, breezy evening. Here in Miami, Frank Lieber along with Dick Vermeil as we head into the final period of play. Dolphins leading the Falcons 31 to 10, but the Falcons threatening with a first down at the Dolphin 26 yard line. Except a little handoff there, but uh, Doug Betters came in quickly to make sure that Gerald Riggs didn't go anywhere. Riggs losing his footing. He tried to cut back and just lost his footing going back inside to his left there. You know, we haven't heard much of Billy Matthews. I mean, Billy Matthews. Billy Johnson. You know, normally we see him make a spectacular play, and they've just sort of kept him pretty much intact. He has not caught a ball. And he's their leading receiver. Second and nine from the 25. That's Johnson in motion. He's not had any thrown at him either, for that matter. Incomplete at the five-yard line. Stacy Bailey has had a rough afternoon as well. He's been held well in check. He's caught three, but only for 21 yards. Paul Langford was back there defending. You know, we mentioned earlier that uh, Atlanta had only two quarterbacks on the roster. With a 49-man roster, uh, would you go with just two? No, I'd go with three. That doesn't mean I'm right and he's wrong, but I would always try to have that third guy. You know, a couple weeks ago, they were really in a bind because they actually, you know, had a wide receiver playing back up quarterback. And Borowski going into that Green Bay game had the flu. And Barkowski was out. But they were in big trouble and would have had to go with Floyd Hodge, who is their receiver and emergency quarterback. Third down, nine from the 25. Again, Johnson in motion. Barkowski on the rollout. Trying to get that one to White Shoes, and he was interfered with. Billy White Shoes Johnson, who has given this Atlanta team a real boost this year. Pass interference on Gerald Small. What a comeback uh, he has made. He caught two passes all of last year. He's got 58 this year coming into this game. That, of course, is an automatic first down, as indicated by Pat Haggerty, the referee. And they'll spot it at the 12 yard line. Pass interference, number 44, first down. Langford, guilty of the pass interference. I'm surprised Langford's playing because he really hadn't practiced. He had sprained his ankle and practiced. See 44 up on top of the screen now. Now they're going to run a comeback. Now watch him come back underneath. See, and I thought it was on small too, but he came over the top just a little bit too soon with that left arm. First down at the 13. Markowski. Off the rigs, and there is nothing there. And they took the ball away from him. Glenn Blackwood, number 47, stole the football. I'm not sure, but I think Doug Betters came underneath that thing to the right of the screen here. Let's see what happens now. You're going to see a guy come right underneath now. See the right, he breaks in there. Boom! Look at that shot right there. Who is that? Bob Howard? I can't see a number. 
No, it is Doug Better's number 75. He did a super job. Blackwood comes up with the football and with the turnover. The Falcons lose it. Dolphins take over at their 15. Your Chevy dealer's big USA One year-end sales drive is on. They're out to sell 250,000 cars and trucks by year's end. With so many to sell, it's dealing time. There's another reason to see your Chevy dealer. You can save up to $375 on a specially equipped Cavalier Type 10 or $330 on a new celebrity. And for the first time ever from Chevrolet, take retail delivery now on any of these selected models only and make no monthly payment until March 1st with GMAC Financing. See your Chevy dealer now. I think there's more flavor to it than other beers. I think Pabst is good beer. Pabst is the place. Your good friends all around you for the real taste of beer. And all the good times you have here. You know it's always going to taste good. That's what counts. For the real taste of beer, Pabst is the place. Frank Lieber with Dick Vermeil. There's a couple of bookends for you, huh, Charles and Betters? Oh, yeah, those guys at Betters is really, he's a mountain man. Loves that great outdoors. Played uh, college ball up in Missoula, Montana. Then transferred to Reno, Nevada when his defensive coordinator left. First down, Dolphins at the 15-yard line. Strzok has done a superb job. In the absence of Marino, Bruce Hardy. That's close for the first down. Got just about 10. As Strzok's 16th completion in 20 pass attempts. This Hardy was a great high school athlete. You know that, Frank, in, in the state of Utah, he was the most valuable football player and most valuable basketball player. And he was a great high school quarterback because I can remember evaluating him when I was at UCLA in 1974. His junior year in college at Virginia Tech, he was the second-ranked passer in the nation. His senior year, he was the first. Well, you're talking about Strzok. I was talking about Hardy. But you're right in. Nice cut. Andre Franklin. Got nine on that play. Another tough man to bring down. Franklin was a second round draft pick when he came up three years ago. His average uh, per carry, not that great. 3.3 right now, which is the worst of his career, really. Right, you know, and, but he was the most valuable player on this football team last year. So they respect him. Second and less than a yard at the 35. protection. Duper at the 35. First down. Butler at the stop. That's really tough on Butler because he has no help to the inside. The safety's up in dog coverage. See, there's no safety. The safety normally would be there to make that play, but he's not with the kind of defense they were playing up front. You really can't fault Bobby Butler on that one. A 30-yard pickup. By Duper, he has averaged better than 19 yards of catch coming into this game, which would tie him with Steve Watson of Denver as the top long ball receivers in pro football, or at least in the AFC. First down at the 36. Shula's been alternating over Street with uh, Tony Nathan all afternoon. He's got a good look at... Uh, Overstreet, you got to be impressed with uh, what David has done here. That's 79 yards rushing in 11 carries. That play right there was a play that Don used to run when he was at Baltimore, and they used to call it the lag draw. Everybody in football sort of runs this from time to time against specific type defenses, and they call it the lag draw. One back lags behind the other, I guess. I don't know. Second down, six Dolphins at the Atlanta 31. Overstreet back inside. He'll be close for the first down at the 27-yard line as the Dolphins now appear to be on a roll. Danny Johnson, the tight end, number 87, did a nice job of blocking at the point of attack and allowed the running back to get turned up inside that kick-out block. Coming into this game, Franklin and Nathan were really uh, waging a war for the rushing leadership on the team. They're just a few yards apart. 656 for Franklin and Nathan had 639. There's Dan Marino. Marino could still wind up the year as the leading quarterback rating wise in the AFC. He'd be the first rookie to do so since 1969 with Greg Cook 
did it in Cincinnati. Third and two, and Strzok wants to go long. Over the middle, intended for Moore. And Fulton Kuykendall is everywhere. I didn't think he had jumping ability like that. He's just what you call a football player. You know, he's the kind of football player, at least he was in college, the less you said to him as a coach, the better he played. You know, because he was so instinctive in playing defensive football. Ninth year from UCLA he was a six-round draft pick when he came up in 1975. Very, very bright young man, uh, to the point of being labeled brilliant mentally. He's really a, an outstanding student when he really put his mind to it, that is. <laughs> Strzok will hold, and Von Schaumann will attempt a 45-yard field goal. He was batting 464 from that distance in his career, so he had less than a 50-50 chance to make that one. Timeout with 10 minutes and 52 seconds left to play in the football game, and the Dolphins with a commanding 31-10 to 10 lead. Four years ago, we introduced Chevy Citation, and it became America's most popular front-drive car. But that wasn't good enough for the engineers. Since that time, they've improved its performance, improved its ride, improved its comfort. And after making so many engineering refinements, we made one more change. The name, announcing Chevy Citation 2. Buy now and no monthly payments till March 1st. Uh, the area code is the 201. What would long distance service be without long distance operators? Without operators to help you with collect calls, person to person calls, operator assisted calls. We know this, it wouldn't be AT&T. Operator? Cliff Robertson? Operator service, call anywhere, anytime, over a century of commitment. That's AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Saturday, a Nazi prisoner volunteers his own capture to mastermind a daring plan of escape. Saturday, Sylvester Stallone stars in Victory. Frank Lieber along with Dick Vermeil at the Orange Bowl in Miami. That's our situation in the final period of play. First and ten, Falcons have the football at their 26-yard line. Markowski... That Bo Robinson in the slot starts him in motion, gives it to Andrews, and Andrews plows over the left side, looking for his 100-yard-plus uh, game, and he's got it. That Bo Robinson, number 33, really does a nice job of blocking, coming in motion and blocking at the point of attack. He really gets after people. You know, he's about 15 to 20 pounds bigger than I've ever seen him before, and he says the reason he's that much bigger is because he's hitting people all the time and not running with the ball. That's a good point. Second down four. Andrews, one of the new fathers in the National Football League. His wife gave birth to a son a couple of weeks ago. And running hard to keep Wolfie away from the door. First down. Tackle by 55. Falcons pick up the first down on Andrews' rush out to the 41-yard line. That was another example of Bo Robinson coming back in motion and blocking up inside on the defense and, and cleaning up the defender. You know, and Robinson was a great running back in college. He broke all of Mercury Morris's records and all of Dwayne Thomas's records at West Texas State. Well, he wound up in Detroit, and all of a sudden, a guy arrived by the name of Billy Sims, and Robinson wasn't needed anymore. First down, Barkowski from the 41. Trying to reach Floyd Hodge. William Judson, number 49, back defending. Talking about Andrews being one of the top rushers in the National Football League. He's up there with some pretty strong company. And most of them, as you will notice, with the exception of Kurt Warner, are from the National Football Conference. This is the figures going into today's game. There's some good people in there. You know there are eight running backs in the National Football League now that have run for over 1,000 yards. They have each average carried the ball 282 times for an average of 1,226 yards at a 4.3 yardage per carry average. Second and 10 from the 41-yard line. Andrews 
Out across the 50 to the 49, but the Dolphins' defense obviously has loosened up a little at this point. They'll let uh, Atlanta run some time off that clock if they so choose. Well, Atlanta still offensively. You know, I think offensively they are a playoff caliber football team. And I said that the first time we saw them early in the year against Detroit. But defensively, they're just they're, they're quite a ways away. Big Mike Ken, the left tackle, pulled that time out of that unbalanced line and came around. And I'll tell you, he's a giant when he pulls. He's about six foot seven, 260. Notice in the Atlanta offensive line, as you see the measurement, uh, the presence of Ronnie Lee, who uh, was a former Miami Dolphin. Yeah, he ate himself right into a guard spot. You know, <laughs> he just got too big to play tight end. I saw him yesterday and then met him. I didn't recognize him at the, his about 260 pounds. Yeah, he's a tight end at Miami, and now, of course, he's an offensive lineman. He was switched to offensive line by the Dolphins, and then they cut him. Third down and inches. For the Atlanta Falcons with the ball at the 49-yard line of Miami as the Killer Bees dig in. The young rookie tackle, Brett Miller, number 62 from Iowa, is in there playing right tackle now in place of Warren Bryant. White shoes in motion. Andrews got the first down after the 46-yard line. You know, if you were seeing Billy White Shoes Johnson playing football for the very first time, You'd probably wonder why do they call this man white shoes? Yeah, well, when he, you know, when he started playing football in the National Football League, nobody was wearing white shoes. He was, you know, unique. He was original. Now everybody wears them. I can remember when a coach thought a guy wearing white shoes was a hot dog. And you're, I'm, I'm the coach. You know, <laughs> you were the guy. I was the guy. A lot of fun did. First down at the 45. Barkowski pumping long. He's got white shoes at the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. First down. And there's a little different technique there by Barkowski. Kind of looked the, the defenders off. Well, this was really nice. He comes back and he fakes the screen to his left. Now, he's going to go down and run a corner pattern. Now, watch him break to the outside now. See him break to the corner. He's starting to hit the seam in that zone defense. They had faked a screen pass close to the line of scrimmage to draw the defenders and then attack the deeper part of that zone. A 21-yard pickup on the play, and that is White Shoes Johnson's first reception of the evening. We, well, we, we, we talked about him at the right time. First down at the 24-yard line of Miami. Dolphins in command here, 31-10. to 10. Nice fake to Andrews. Barkowski going long. That was almost a great catch. Very close. White Shoes really giving it all. You know, he wears those gloves that are they're kind of like a scuba diving gloves. There's Kozlowski, who is shaken up on the play, the nickelback in the Dolphins' defense. But uh, how many pairs of those gloves does White Shoes have? He told us last week, didn't he? His locker is just full of them. And they're, they're uh, what are they, skin diving gloves? Or sc scuba. Scuba diving gloves. And uh, he says that, that the outside always remains dry when his hands perspire, it's inside. Otherwise, the perspiration is on the surface of the ball. He just has a better gripping ability. And he wears them regardless of the temperature. Shotgun Rapids, Idaho, and Milwaukee folks mean something great to these guys. The shotgun means white water at its best. And Milwaukee means beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Taste as great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. After a night below freezing. After three hours with the lights on. After all these years, people still have more confidence in Sears Die Hard than any other battery you can buy all over America. At Sears Tire and Auto Centers, when we install a Die Hard, we install confidence. There's more for your life at Sears. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl. You see Don Shula, that's... Uh... David Woodley right over his shoulder there. Now, he's been a quiet man this year, hasn't he? Since the right, he's accepted his responsibility and, for, and his position real well. Second and 10. Andrews to the 20. Andrews to the 15, to the 10. One man to beat. Touchdown. Another great individual ever. William Andrews carries. Boy, is he a player. There were some real nice blocks at the point of attack, too. That's his second, third effort. Running ability. 
Man in motion coming across. He's going to hand off to him. Now he's going to break to the outside right now. They're going outside. Nice block right there by number 78 right there, Mike Ken. Now he, just watch this. Great balance. Look at him spin off all those guys. No one wrapped their arms around him. He's just going to get it in the end zone. Blackwood got over there, but it was too late, Frank. Stopping him is like uh, singing the Hallelujah Chorus. You can do it, but it helps to have more than one. <laughs> Luckhurst on the extra point drive. He's got seven and a half minutes left to play in the game. Extra point is good. And he bangs it on through to make it a 31 to 17 game. Who knows? Still got a ways to go. Stay tuned. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Your Chevy dealer's big USA One year-end sales drive is on. They're out to sell 250,000 cars and trucks by year's end. With so many to sell, it's dealing time. And to make it easy to buy now, here's a first-time offer from Chevrolet. Take retail delivery now and make no monthly payments until March 1st with GMAC financing. When you buy a new Chevette or Citation 2 or any new Blazer, Pickup, Suburban, or El Camino. See your Chevy dealer now. Radio Shack believes a computer for your family is an important investment. That's why you owe it to them to see the sale price color computer too. Widely used in schools and homes, it's expandable with quality peripherals and supported by a vast library of software for education, home management, communications, and games. The color computer too at $80 off is backed by our national service and training. Only at Radio Shack, your electronic store for over 60 years. It's the game of the year. The Washington Redskins battle the Dallas Cowboys for first place in the NFC East, plus other regional doubleheader action tomorrow on CBS Sports. Nick Luckhurst ready to kick off for the Atlanta Falcons. Vince Heflin has been back deep in the absence of Fulton Walker, who was shaken up a bit earlier. It's like he and Tony Nathan. go 10 yards. It touched an Atlanta man before it went 10 yards. So the Dolphins come up with it at the 43-yard line. They decline the penalty. They can get the ball there quite obviously. Matt Haggerty, the referee, will check signals with his officiating crew before he gives us the word. William Andrews has now rushed for 160 yards and 20 carries. Illegal touching by the offense. Offside by the offense. Ball recovered by the defense. First down. So the Dolphins will take it at their 43, which is where they recovered it. Take a look at it. Got to go 10, and obviously the ball's got to go 10 yards before it hits an Atlanta player. It hit John Harper right there. Now the ball's rolling free, and of course Miami recovered it. Officially, this is now this is Andrew's best game of the year, right, Russia? Right. He has two games of 150 yards, one against Detroit, one against San Francisco. So this is his best game. His career high is 167, so he is within seven yards of that, with uh, 20 carries and 160 yards. Pretty hefty average, too. Again, the defense bending but not breaking, not giving up enough points to lose. Duper to the left side, Nat Moore to the right, struck 17 out of 22 for 214 yards. Andre Franklin. Andre Franklin. Falcons trying to tackle the ball. Interesting thing talking to Shula. Remember that old coaching staff back at the University of Kentucky that he was a member of? There were six guys on that staff. Yeah, start naming them. See if I can remember them all. Arnst Barger. Arnst Barger, right. Lehman Bennett was a graduate assistant on that test. Chuck Knox, right. Howard Schnellenberger. Howard Schnellenberger, right. Now Miami. Who else? John North, who used John to John North that was New Orleans head coach. Yeah. Of course, Blanton Collier was Blanton the head coach. Collier. Yeah. And later at Cleveland. Yeah. That's and a heck of a staff. One of the assistants was Ermel Allen, who is now an assistant on the Cowboys staff. Longtime assistant. Second and eight. Strzok. Drilling a bullet to Duper for the first down at the 40. Little man could go upstairs. And a slow 
start, but he's picking up steam. He comes off to the outside now. It's zone coverage. One man playing short, one deep. You see, they ran a, a screen pass along with it. He had the option of going downfield with the ball or throwing a screen pass right along the line of scrimmage. And with the lineman coming out on the screen, it pulled those defenders up short and gave him that little hole in the defense. Of course, you were still coaching when he came out. You kind of liked it, didn't you? Oh, do, you bet. I thought he was going to be a real good one, but I, didn't, I thought we could draft him in the third or fourth round, and Don took him in the second. First down, Dolphins at the Atlanta 40-yard line. 5.55 left in the game. Andre Franklin trying to get outside. Johnson came up quickly, number 37, Friedmoor, number 27, and your man, Colton Kuykendall, number 54. Nice block by Dan Johnson, the tight end, number 87, at the point of attack. And you know what Andre Flank did that time? He used a stiff arm. You don't see many running backs anymore using that straight arm technique of old. You know what? He sticks it out there and keeps that defender off it. He is one yard, second and nine. They still coach that? You don't see many players, as you yeah. say. You know, I don't remember seeing many drills of it. Uh, I'm sure that people still use it as a running back drill, but you just don't see it used very often. Pickup of the yard, second and nine from the 39. Franklin, he'll break a few tackles. Down to the 31-yard line. Earl Jones, number 20, made the stop. He's very close to a first down. John Geisler did a real nice job. The left tackle, number 79, and using a little influence draw type block and turn the defensive end out, and the running back was right up underneath it. A little short of the first down. Now watch the offensive left tackle right to the right of your screen. Now see, he's setting down. Now it's going to turn him out. See him turning out right now. A back came through. A lineman came through and let it up there. Now it's just running with horsepower up inside. Franklin now with 14 carries for 58 yards. There's Over John Street Geisler. carried 12. Tony Nathan has only carried it twice. They're getting a good look at Overstreet. Franklin trying to pick up the first diving for it. They needed a yard, and I don't think he got it. I'll tell you, Roy Foster got stuffed into the backfield that time, that big 275-pounder. I don't know who was on him, but he stuffed him. Fourth down at about a foot and a half. Apparently, we'll go for it. Now, see that Foster number 61 getting driven back right there? I can't see the defender on him. He's coming off him right now, but he did a real nice job. It was John Rady, a linebacker. Did a heck of a nice job at 214 pounds against 275 pounds. You've got to give Rady some credit. Fourth down and less than a yard. Miami at the Atlanta 31. Franklin caught behind the line, still on his feet. Trying to lateral the ball. Still loose on the ground. That's still loose. And finally picked up by one of the Falcons. That's a live football. One of the Falcons' defensive linemen finally picked it up. It looked to be number 72. In that case, it would have been uh, Andrew Providence. Andrew I Providence. think they blew the whistle. He's the big guy we saw walking around the lobby yesterday. He's got arms like piano legs. the discussion will be where to spot the ball and uh, will the run by Rob uh, province uh, it'll be Atlanta's ball quite obviously it just depends where they put it down here they got to give it to him apparently yeah. that province bench press is 500 pounds I've never seen anybody do that look at the arms on him here it is again now there was penetration inside right there by province somebody blew the assignment to turn him loose like that you figured he had nothing to lose here they're, right? they're going to play rugby he wanted to pitch it to Strzok, and Strzok says, I don't want it. Yeah, he ought to get Luckhurst in there. He was the NCAA rugby player, MVP, in fact. Andrew Provitz running like uh, he thinks he's William Andrews. <laughs> they spotted at the 36-yard line of the Dolphins. Unbalanced line. Andrews. Got a yard, maybe two. I hate, I hate to be in that film session when Shula runs that play a moment ago, right? And yes. as, as a chat or so with uh, yeah. Mr. Franklin. You know, I'm sure he has a sense of humor, but when he's on that football field, uh, he doesn't show it. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of drill it is or what kind of tempo, full pads, no pads, he's in command. William Andrews now six yards away from his 
single game club rushing record of 167 yards. Second and nine from the 35. Andrews, 30, 25. Button heads inside the 20 and down to the 18 yard line. Hey, don't count Atlanta out if they score quickly and can put off that onside kick. It could still be interesting. Boy, that was a great effort, but it was a little screen and Dan DeFore. A free agent rookie from UCLA number 71 came out there and got a nice block for him. Watch him now. He's going to throw it out here. Now watch 71 to the right of your screen. There, he's getting a nice block right up there, and he got, look at this butt right there. Holy mackerel, did he give it to Blackwood. Lyle Blackwood, he decked him. God, I'm glad I'm not a defender playing in this league against guys like him. That's a first down, quite obviously, at the 13-yard line. Barkowski being struggled behind for the second time this afternoon. It was Bob Baumhauer, number 73, and Mike Charles, number 71, who penetrated. What he was trying to do there is set short and fake the quick hitch, and then the hitch man was going to go deep, but the, it didn't work because the, the pass rush got to him. Now watch him come back. He's going to go one, two, three, pump. Now he's going to jump back and try to throw the go pattern off that, and he couldn't do it. Baumhauer, number 73, came around and got after him. That's his fourth and a half sack this year. How do you get half a sack? I still well, you're getting credit for helping somebody else and maybe make simultaneous contact. I, you know, everybody does it a little bit different. But you know, in the National Football League, if you do not sack a quarterback once in the ball game, you lose 75% of the time. I didn't know that. That's the truth. Coming up tomorrow on CBS, big doubleheader. Most of you across the country will have a chance to see San Francisco take on Buffalo. That is a critical game for both those clubs. Playoff hopes. Elsewhere, New Orleans and Philadelphia, Chicago, Minnesota, Detroit at Cincinnati. And for most fans, it's all the, just the appetizer. <laughs> I know it. For the big I, one. Cowboys and the Redskins. We've been talking about matchups in that game. Take a look at another one. Give me your thought on this one. Charlie Brown, Everson Walls, you know, one of the top big play receivers going after one of the best defensive backs, if not the best corner in football. Charlie Brown has the advantage in speed. Everson Wall has that great feel. And as soon as you think you're going to beat him, he lulls you asleep, rather, and he picks that thing off. That's going to be Landry. a heck of a struggle. Tom Landry told us last week, he said, Everson Walls plays a defensive back like he's a receiver. Yeah. That's a good point. I never thought of it that way, but he does. Second down, 16. Falcons from the 24. Barkowski. Is complete inside the five-yard line to Junior Miller. He just got in the game, huh? He's, he's Haven't fresh. seen him show up yet. That's a first down at the four-yard line. Junior Miller, still bowler his first two years. He caught 46 balls in 1980, the year we went to the Super Bowl, and we had to play those guys on the way, and they beat us. And I was really thankful that uh, Dallas knocked him off so we didn't have to play him again. He was an All-American at Nebraska. Yeah, it's hard to believe just three years ago the Falcons were within uh, minutes of, of playing the Eagles in the championship game. Yeah, within yeah, within seconds. Minutes. Yeah, with seconds. The Drew Pearson caught those two touchdown passes for the Cowboys late. From Danny White. Lehman Bennett did a good job with that football team, and uh, I had coached with the Los Angeles Rams with Lehman Bennett. He's a real quality coach, quality person, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him pop up with a head coaching job in the National Football League this year. Timeout with two minutes and two seconds. Left to play in the football game. The Dolphins leading 31 to 17. But if Atlanta could get in quickly here, try the onside kick and execute it successfully, we may see the return of Big Ben. They have done it before. I that mean, they've been behind. They were behind the Jets 21 to nothing. Came back and won. They were behind the Packers 21 to nothing. Came back and won. They were down uh, 14 to nothing a couple weeks ago. Get San Francisco won it on the Big Ben play. That's right, and I've talked to Bill Walsh this week out San Francisco, and uh, boy, do those kind of losses really take it out of it. And then you come to a point now where Bill is going to new, uh, going to play uh, Buffalo, is it tomorrow, and in the snow and all, whatever it may be, and thinking back to losing one on the final play of the game like that, and now having it boil down, Frank, to where you're battling for the playoffs, it, it really hurts. Now, you saw Arns Parker talking to uh, Glenn Blackwood, number 47, who is kind of the uh, defensive quarterback of the Killer Bees. He probably wants this game to get over with so he can get recruit. First down, goal to goal. Falcons at the four. Mark 
Gronkowski. Watch the quick touchdown. He's got, got it. it. Floyd Hodge, number 83. Holds in the bullet from Steve Barkowski. Now, things will get interesting. <laughs> However, and we got a marker down. Hold it. It is offside against Miami, which will be declined. Quite obviously, the touchdown stands. He's coming across in motion. Now he's going to go up and watch him stick him right there with that one step. That froze the defender and gave him the room to work inside out, right down the goal line. Touchdown. William Judson trying to get to Hodge. Couldn't do it. Some guys, some receivers really have the knack of when to go ahead and plant, stick, shake and break, whatever it may be, and then break away from that defender. You just freeze him in your tracks by doing that. So Luckers to try the extra point. We've got a minute 58 to go. He's got it. Now we've got a seven-point game. And you can look for the onside kick to come as the two-minute warning goes to both benches as Miami's lead has been cut to seven points. Stay with us. Thinking about throwing in the towel? No. Think about making it Michelob Light for the winners. Your serve. Michelob Light for the winners. Would good friends really play this hard for a beer? Well, it is Michelob Light, the rich, smooth taste you can compare to any beer you like. Michelob Light for the winners. Boy, I need help in my serve. Tom will help you. First, you remove the cap. Oh. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Are you tough enough to make it with the U.S. Army? Chevy trucks are. The Army contracted for 53,000 tough, full-size Chevy pickups and blazers. These rugged four-wheel drives are regular production vehicles powered by the proven 6.2-liter diesel V8. Need a truck as tough as the U.S. Army's? Just sign up at your Chevy dealers today. And now, take delivery of any new full-size pickup and make no monthly payments till March 1st. Frank Lieber with Dick Vermeil at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Seven points separating these two clubs with a minute 58 to go. That's the timeout situation. And Dick and I are sitting there scratching our heads wondering where Atlantic lost all those timeouts. I don't remember. That's how remember. alert I am. I don't remember him using three either. But that's the official word we get as Luckers prepares to kick off. Want to bet he's going to go onside? Yeah. Maybe not. Let's see here. Maybe he, I'll tell you, he can do about anything he wants to do with the football. And he there can also comes. pooch it over the top. Onside kick attempt. Scramble for the ball. We got a penalty marker down. Again, it may be a case of Atlanta touching the ball first, but Miami recovered, which will make it a moot issue as they'll get the football at the 48-yard line. And the Falcons enter the field. Here's the call. There is no foul on the play. Disregard the flag. First down, Miami. He just dropped the hanky accidentally. Dropped the hanky. There you are using that old-fashioned term, dating yourself. Here's the onside kick. See, everybody came over and loaded up there, getting more people out in front. I don't know why they threw the flag. The ball know. went 10. Just a mistake made. An official made a mistake. Mark McNally doesn't allow that. Thing. Well, he, he normally doesn't admit it in public. <laughs> oh, I tell you, he does a super job, too. First down, Atlanta is out of timeouts. And Strzok, oh, God, knows all he's got to do is sit on it. I hate that play. I yeah. really do. I, I, in fact, you know, I would, would have voted many times about he just eliminating that. And an offensive team always has to make an effort to move the ball. The executive producer of the NFL on CBS, Terry O'Neill. Our senior producer, our good friend Red Eye, Charles H. Milton III. And our producer in Miami, Bob Stenner. Our director, Joe Assetti. Bill Brown, our associate producer, Lou Scanna. Lance Farrell and the rest of the people who helped bring this one to you today. Atlanta helpless here in stopping the clock. Oh, Strzok just going to sit on it. He's had a great day, 18 out of 23 for 229 yards. 
That Strzok is a heck of a young man, you know, and he's done a lot of things. He's never really complained about his situation here. He's been under pressure many times coming in in the fourth quarter to try to win one that they need three points or six points, and he's, you know, he's delivered. Plus, he's done a lot of things in the community. He's a big fundraiser for the Ronald McDonald House people here in the South Florida area. He's really a fine man. Miami with a victory here would go 11 and five, four on the year, and Atlanta to six and nine. He's hurting the rushing average by falling so far back. This is third down. And they don't have to snap the ball for the fourth down. That's it. So the Falcons gave him a battle. William Andrews winds up with 161 yards rushing, his high for the year, and six yards shy of his club record. In addition to that, he caught five passes. Markowski hit 15 out of 26 after coming back with a sore knee, but only 124 yards. It struck 18 out of 23 for 229. And once again, Don Shula and the Miami Dolphins emerge triumphant. Dick Vermeil, and I'll be back at the Orange Bowl in just a moment. We are an explorer, a farmer, a miner and an insurance company. We're a pipeline, a truck line, a gold mine, and a leasing company. We're a builder, a printer, a logger, and an energy company. We are more than 41,000 men and women working in 18 different industries all across America. We are Southern Pacific. We also run a railroad. Final score here, Miami 31, Atlanta 24. Big doubleheader on CBS tomorrow, of course, highlighted by the matchup between the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys and my colleague Dick Vermeil will be in the NFL Today studio. So for Dick, Frank Lieber saying so long from the Orange Bowl for the final score, 31-24. Dolphins, you've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. United Airlines to Hong Kong and to Tokyo. Fly a friend to the Far East. Be sure to watch a fascinating edition of 60 Minutes, the popular television news magazine that features Mike Wallace, Morley Safer, Harry Reasoner, and Ed Bradley, Sunday evening on CBS. Coming right up, Eyewitness News, and among the stories we're working on tonight, quintuplets born late this afternoon at Yale New Haven Hospital. Word from the White House that nearly all the boys will be coming home from Grenada. The White House recoiling from Edwin Meese's soup kitchen statement. And Mrs. Lech Boenza picking up her husband's Nobel Peace Prize. We'll have those stories and more. Bill Sports, Bruce's forecast next on Eyewitness News. The Diamond Specialists at Diamond Showcase present gifts of love for that special person that'll be remembered from Christmas to Christmas. You can sing her a song, paint her a rainbow, tell her in rhyme all the love that you feel, or give her a diamond and show her the magic is real. The magic of love. The Diamond Showcase way. The magic of love. The Diamond Showcase, located in Bristol, Simsbury, Manchester, Vernon, and West Farms Mall. Did you know you can get a TV set today with a fantastic feature? A built-in speaker phone. I can answer or call <laughs> with this. <laughs> it can even store two special numbers and dial them automatically. To get it, you have to ask for it by name. System 3 with Space Phone by Zenith. The smart set. <laughs> Hi, Ricky. <laughs> Berkshires to the sound, from wherever you live, this is Eyewitness News with Gail King.
Jerry Brooks, Bruce DePriest Weather, and Bill Patrick Sports. Good evening, everybody. Gail's off tonight, and we have what you might call a quintessential story topping the news. Quintuplets, believed to be the first in Connecticut, have been delivered at Yale New Haven Hospital. Diane and Cameron Kirshner becoming the proud parents of three boys and two girls just after 4 o'clock this afternoon. The quints weigh anywhere from 1 pound 10 ounces to 1 pound 15 ounces. They were delivered by cesarean section, and tonight they're in guarded condition, but mother and children said to be doing very well. Cameron Kirshner is a doctor at Yale New Haven, where his children become the ninth living set of quints in the country, at least according to unofficial records. We have a crew on the way to the hospital. We'll have more for you on Eyewitness News Nightbeat. It'll be a very merry Christmas for most of the American servicemen stationed in Grenada. A White House source confirming that more than 900 U.S. paratroopers will be airlifted home on Monday, and virtually all remaining combat and support troops will be pulled out by Thursday. 